This week, we welcome Luis Falto from La Garita Cigar Company and Falto Cigars in studio for an interview, which is always fun. Uh, this will be his second appearance on the show. We'll be talking about a new cigar uh, that he's recently released. Uh, and then, Joe Hollywood's got something special planned for you, and you're just going to have to stay tuned to see what it is. I think it's a surprise for, for him as well. So all that and more on this edition of The Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. This is episode 273. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian. Excited to be here as always. Well, this cigar is like pouring smoke. I love that. It's awesome. I love that. It's really great. We've got a very special guest here in the studio, but first... Joe Hollywood is here. How are ya? Joe Hollywood is your uh, fourth or fifth day? Four. This is day five. This is day five for you, full time here at Security Weekly. And Stogie Geeks is, of course, produced under the, the Security Weekly uh, moniker. And so Joe had a really epic <laughs> first week. <laughs> this has been one hell of a week, sir. <laughs> I think it was Wednesday at 8.30 in the morning. Joe has uh, disclosed to me, he's like, Paul, I, I closed my first deal, which yep. you know we can all applause for Joe. He gets a chair now and everything. It's great. And <laughs> he's over at the lock picking table at a security conference in Boston, and he picks his first lock. And I'm like, dude, it's not even 9 a.m. I'm like, you closed a sales deal. You're picking locks for the first time. I'm like, where do you go from here? Like, go buy a lottery ticket. Yeah, right. <laughs> so uh, we had lots of fun. It's then good we, to be here in studio. Yeah, then we get to uh, squeeze in an interview with... Mr. Falto over here. Yes, thank you for joining us. Well, uh, he's thank you for having me. He's, ta he's taking off his headphones and jumping on a plane. That's it. <laughs> right after this. Uh, yeah. yeah, thanks for making time for us, uh, Louise. This is great. And so I was uh, delighted to see a, a box press cigar waiting for me. Thank you very much. Uh, when I sat down, I really love box press cigar. Just not knowing anything else about this uh, particular release so far, as I have not had a chance to review it as we were traveling. But uh, I love the box press cigars. What, what went into the decision behind? And this is your first box press cigar, My right? My first one. So why My did you choose? Uh, other than you hadn't done it before, why yeah, box press? Something different again. You know, uh, I thought my cigars. I uh, just wanted to do something different, and it's mostly aesthetics, you know. Yeah. But uh, it was. I think it was a long overdue. I know people enjoy box press cigars. I do myself. So I uh, just decided to do something like that. I like the box press cigars primarily for their smoking characteristics mm -hmm. I, I don't know you know you can debate how it impacts the flavor certainly but i just think from an experience side i like a little looser draw and i like a little more smoke uh and, and not i mean you can take that to an extreme and it'll detract from the enjoyment of the cigar in my mm -hmm. opinion but i think if it's more than like the normal amount i i enjoy it more is that is that Am I well, on you, something there, or you know, the the concept of the box press cigar began in Cuba. Uh, they used to put the cigars a little bit too wet of the rolling table in the boxes, and the pressure of the box would actually yes make them this shape, square shape. Uh, I don't think there's uh, too much of a change in the dynamic of the the, the smoking that that dynamic, but uh, it might help the the draw but other than that i think it's the the same dynamic that you're looking for in a cigar no what's interesting is cuban cigars were kind of naturally pressed in that yeah, way yeah, yeah. but in in today many of today's box press cigars they're taking out some of the filler so there uh is less filler and then they're putting it into a press mm. it, it, it was that your method or no 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 uh we actually did a bunch you know the, which is uh, the filler and the binder and we put them in a in a in a press, in a in a bowl. Uh, it's quite shaped, so 
after that, you know, after a, maybe a period of like four to five hours, you know, then they apply the wrapper and they put it back again into the mold mm -hmm. so for it to, to, to get that shape. But we don't eliminate any filler leaves to make it softer to, to acquire that shape. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a, it's a, just like a same cigar, just different mold. Right, right. You know. That's awesome. So tell us about the uh, uh, wrapper, binder, and filler. Yes, uh, leaves the, the, the wrapper is a very special wrapper that I tried like about, I don't know, like maybe two or three years ago at uh, Leo Reyes Factory mm -hmm. uh, Farm in Navarrete, Dominican Republic. It's a Havana 92, uh, grown in Dominican Republic. I really fell in love with that wrapper. So I have to do something with that. The binder is uh, some other Ecuador. Uh, uh, the filler is mostly Dominican with just a little bit of uh, uh, Nicaragua. It's a, it's a tiny bit of Nicaragua, but mostly Dominican. Mm. Yeah. That's also And now, <coughs> the, the what's the story behind this? Uh, what is the full name of the cigar and the yeah, story behind it? The Esfalto LJF, which is my my initials. Uh, my, my full name is Luis Juan Esfalto. That's LJF. Uh, Reserva del Fundador, which means uh, Founders Reserve. I'm the founder, so that's yeah. my name and everything. So I just, it's the first time that I actually use my name on a cigar. Like, you know, my, my Your full name. Full yeah. name, yeah. And w was this to commemorate uh, an anniversary or just your. No, like you know, your I, I'm just uh, still celebrating this year, my 23rd anniversary, like uh, in the industry. Mm -hmm. So half, more than half of my life. I'm 43 right now, so more than half of my life making cigars. But uh, n nothing too special there you know just just another great cigar that you know that i enjoy smoking and everybody seems to also enjoy them so but nothing special only you know just uh giving another experience another good experience for people and have you lived in puerto rico yes I, I still live in puerto rico yeah. and i wanted to ask you because i have uh friends in, in puerto rico as well uh post hurricane i think a lot of people don't realize the recovery efforts are still like there's still a lot of rebuilding that has to be yeah. done. In my part of the island, I'm living on the west coast. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, fortunately enough, uh, uh, my house didn't suffer that many damage. Just a little bit of water uh, damage. But uh, my studio, which my my place of business, I call it my tobacco studio. Mm -hmm. So nothing, nothing really happened there. Uh, thank God we had also access to power plants. Uh, so that we, you know, can have uh, uh, electricity running. Mm. But uh, there's still some people, you know, m mostly in the countryside, you know, the the efforts to get over there because of all the trees falling down and roads being completely destroyed. So it's a little bit hard in the center of the island. Mm. But uh, most cities already have, uh, most of them, not, not all of them, already have, you know, uh, power, you know. Now, um, the they grow tobacco in Puerto Rico as well, correct? They, they used to. They used to. Mm -hmm. when, when there was a time, uh, let's say 1940s, 1950s, 60s, that tobacco, when there was no tobacco in Cuba, for example, uh, there was a huge in Cuba, destroyed mm. everything. So they used tobacco from Puerto Rico. It was very good. It was very, very good. Uh, in We have good valleys with that perfect temperature, sunlight, and everything. However, you know, th we had three cra cash crops in Puerto Rico, which is, uh, it was cherokee for the sugar, it was uh, coffee and tobacco. There was more money in coffee and sugar mm -hmm. So tobacco just kept on, you know, losing ground. Uh, I still and know sugar cane for rum, right? Uh, for yeah. rum and, and for um, sugar and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it was also... I still know a couple of people that go, but, but something very domestic, you know, in the sure. backyard or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's no no huge uh, plantations, uh, so and there's not too much variety. The problem in Puerto Rico is that the process of fermenting the tobacco, curing it, all of that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. They don't give it to. They don't take time to do that, and that doesn't take like maybe three or six, uh, six months you know that that takes years years yeah for example all the tobacco that i use in my cigars is at least six years old mm. you know from when you plant the seeds to you actually have the tobacco ready to be 
made him throw a cigar. Uh, it's at, le- at least six years. Mm. You know? So you have to you have to do go through those processes to actually acquire a quality product. You know, you know, it, it doesn't take just six months. Like a lot of people sometimes do it. So something like that is uh, mostly ammonia. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah, so it, it's, I find the history fascinating. So there was a hurricane that went through Cuba, so they started growing in Puerto Rico. Were there the no, brands? No, they, they grew before, before yeah. hurricanes in Cuba. And uh, there were brands that came oh, out of Puerto Rico, uh, right? I, and, and I want to show you this b- before you leave. I have a picture of these cigar bands that I bought at a, a store here in the U.S., and I, I had no idea where the bands came from. And when I did some research, many of them were uh, yeah, from yeah, Puerto Rico. Yeah, I, I, I remember in the factory, you know, I made my cigars at the Aurora factory. But uh, Don Fernando Leon, which was uh, the owner the, the, the owner and uh, the father of Guillermo Leon, mm-hmm. uh, who is now the president and owner of the factory, uh, he had a huge collection of uh, bands, you know, and, and art. And I know that that uh, he had like maybe 20, 25 different artwork for all of them from Puerto Rico. Mm. And we're, t- we're t- talking maybe the, for the 1910, 1920s, 30s, you know, it was a really old art, but all of bands from Puerto Rico. Mm. Actually, there was a band that it was interesting because the first name of my company was La Garita Cigar Company. And there was a band, uh, a cigar that was named La Garita. Mm. You know, in from Puerto Rico. From Puerto Rico, yeah, mm-hmm. it was all from Puerto Rico. Uh, my, the West Coast was very. Uh, we had a couple of factories, uh, but mostly in the southeastern part of Puerto Rico and in the in the uh, mountain range in the middle of Puerto Rico was where both of the tobaccos were grown, but mm-hmm. made and processed in the West Coast and maybe the north western part of South puerto rico and so but today now you source your tobacco from as you said yeah. in this cigar dominican nicaragua yeah. ecuador yeah yeah it's both the tobacco i get from there but i also i use a lot of uh for example leo reyes who is uh who provided me with this uh wrapper uh, he has a great tobacco he has a great tobacco i think it's one of the best growers in the Dominican republic and uh you know i use a lot of his tobacco so i have access to to a lot of uh, mostly uh, anything that I want. Uh, right. So you don't need to grow in Puerto Rico. No, <laughs> no, no. no. Right ah, actually, I was going to grow one time in Puerto Rico. It's a fun, kind of funny story. And I got the land and everything. They used to, it was a valley, but they had coffee around the the, sure. the land. So you know that, that that would actually transfer into into the soil and everything. Mm-hmm. But uh, when I was going to grow it, uh, the guy who was going to rent me the land, he just backed backed out and. So I ended up not going tobacco in Puerto Rico, but thank God because you know to grow tobacco is very expensive. Mm-hmm. If you have a Caesar susceptible to diseases, you might lose the entire plantation. So it's, I, I let that go to the people that actually know sure. their stuff. I know a lot about the farm and the growing of tobacco, but you know those guys just do that. They don't even do the cigars. Most of them don't do cigars; they just go with tobacco. They're just the yeah the growers, exactly. Yeah. Well, and, and growing it, like you were mentioned earlier, is one thing. Then once you start processing it after the plant is grown, like that's multiple steps. You oh, know, yeah, many yeah. many steps yeah, in yeah. the in the process. I mean, you know, major steps, but uh, well, there's a whole lot to have, that whole process. You have three months to at least grow the tobacco from seedling to to, mm-hmm. to the to have a, a full mature plant in the in the. <coughs> in the field and then you have 45 days to 51 days to for the in the curing barns and from that they you go on to fermenting the tobacco at least three times and then you know curing the tobacco again and then uh aging the tobacco so you know that entire process you know it goes uh four five six years yeah you know so it's the it's, it's the you have to be patient here patient is a virtue and you have mm-hmm. to be patient Joe, questions for Luis? Um, I want to talk about the the this stick, and then I want to talk about some other blends that you have. But in regards to this stick, Paul, this it got released in April of, the, of this year. Mm-hmm. Right? It's it's uh, Luis's first box press, and currently it's in three shops in the United States. Havana being one of them. Havana being one of them. So if you're 
looking, if, if you're a Stogie Geeks listener and you're looking for something truly different and truly exclusive that chances are will not be around your local retailer yet, this is a stick for you. Yeah, they, I, they should contact the Havana Club and, you know, uh, they will ship for sure. But uh, it's in, in regards to the stick, uh, moderately loose draw, right? Lots of smoke. Mm-hmm. Awesome on the palate. I'm getting a little bit of white pepper. I'm getting those pepper notes yeah. too. I'm yep. glad you said that because yep. I was kind of rolling around in my palate trying to see mm. what I was getting. Yeah, definitely, definitely some pepper in there. Yeah, you know, I still, I still make uh, very small production. You know, I only make 100 boxes per cigar that I make. I have a, right now I have 22 different blends and it's 100 boxes of each. Uh, sometimes uh, boxes of 10, so that will be a thousand a production. Mm-hmm. Or twenty five, that would twenty five hundred, you know. But uh, <coughs> you know, it's a very small production, so I cannot just sell just anywhere. So, for example, I received the the production. I've been working in the cigar for a year and a half or so, and I received the their production on last uh, fe- February. It's February, and uh, but I just uh, offered it to a couple of people, you know, and uh, uh and. Of course, start at the uh, at the Balance Hair Club. I uh, have also Mickey Blake's. Uh, just calling people here, but um, in in Connecticut and also uh, the Marcus Sanchez Tobacconist in Naples, in Florida. Those are the three ones that right now have the the you know availability of the cigar right at the moment. The official launch of the cigar in the states will be in the trade show. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Vegas, but I put it already into the market. Uh, my anniversary party was uh, April 7th, so that was when the cigar actually came out. You know, what was the store in Naples again? Uh, Marcus Daniel Tobacconist. Okay, I'm not sure if I've been to, I think I've been there before. Yeah. I've definitely been to Naples a few times because mm-hmm. I have family there, but it's a very, very nice, very cigar friendly town, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's a he's a great purveyor of cigars, very very nice guy and very knowledgeable. Awesome. Yeah. The business model of the exclusivity and limited, very ultra limited, if you could, yeah. of of Falto. Um, <laughs> take us through that technique, because because you've been able to sustain a business for twenty three years. Yeah. Uh, it's not easy, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not easy. But, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's good that you use that word uh, ultra because that's why I call my cigars ultra boutique. Sure. You know, they're very exclusive. They're very, like I said, in very small quantities. But uh, it's just, you know, trying to, trying to give myself, first of all, I would not put a cigar in the market if I don't smoke it myself and I don't enjoy it myself. Thank God that the market enjoys my pilot. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, there's some similarity there. So so I've been successful in that part. But, uh, you know, you have to just go out there, you know, and try to, you know, you guys, myself, most tobacco people, we need to teach. Part of our thing is teach. And we have to teach people about, you know, what a difference of a good cigar, a medium cigar, and a mediocre cigar is. So, you you know, doing shows like this, you actually get to teach the, your audience about quality and what you're trying to look for. And that's, that's part of uh, the success mm-hmm. uh, of this. You know, I have people that go to my place of business, which I actually, my service is by appointment only. I don't open to the public. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, just receive people just asking questions, asking questions and just explain to them how, how everything g- grows and how everything develops. And so, you know, that's nice. That's uh, very satisfying. And, you know, that's, uh, that's why you're successful. When people trust you and know that you are dedicating time to teach them and to allow them to develop their product, you know, that's, uh, that's how... You go, you go and be, be have a good success. But it's, it's difficult when you are such a small company. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many huge companies through a state, 
even La Aurora, uh, you know, uh, to a state, uh, uh, you know, huge companies, you know. And nowadays, a lot of uh, uh, big tobacco companies are buying other companies, like, for example, USA was bought the other day by Scandinavian Tobacco. You know, stuff like that, you know, it's like Altria bought the Sherman, mm-hmm. which uh, the cigars are made at Quesada. Yeah, so, so, you know, to compete with that is a little bit difficult, but when you actually get a couple of boxes of my cigar in the shelves of any store that I approve of, you know, I have to look and see the ambience and everything. So, you know, it's very satisfying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, that was my question is how, how do you find that product market fit? And in, it's not even so much a market fit. It's an, it's an individual fit to yeah. your customer. And we deal with that in, in, I think, in our security business sure. too, right? Like we're, we're not a product for everyone and we don't, we approach all potential customers the same way. Mm-hmm. And like some people respond and some people don't. And I feel like as a business owner, you spend your entire life still trying to figure that out in every <laughs> situation. It happens, you know, you have to, that's part of it. For example, yesterday we had an event at Havana uh, Sierra Club mm-hmm. next door. You know, it was like a, a whiskey tasting but also you know try that whiskey with a cigar mm-hmm. so people you know, the cigar you know so that they, they they get a chance to for them to try it and may, yeah. maybe they will like it maybe they, they will not like it you, you, you never know but normally the feedback is very good it's interesting because when i'm making i started making cigars in 1995 uh, my concept was mira i want to do very small production I want to choose my rollers. I want to choose my my <coughs> my brands. Excellent. I learned all that in '94 when I worked at some farms in the DR. But uh, you know, it's the thing of making one size per blend. Now, when I started doing that, but back 23 years ago, they told me you you're crazy. You know, that's never gonna work. This is <laughs> for you. This is not serious. But that's, like that. that's what I love about you and your brand too. Is that's that's so unique. Yeah, and I, so I, love I, that, I said, I, that. I just, I just, you know, if if I go, if I don't, it don't work out. It don't work out. But I, this is how I want to do it. So I was very determined in that. Nowadays, you see a lot of uh, companies, like big uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, production companies, doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. The Andalusian Bulls, for example. Oh, for the Florida Dominicana, the mm-hmm. Andalus- it's only one size. One size, yes. You know? One size one for, for that blend. Yeah, That's the it. Aurora mm-hmm. also, those, those uh, puro vintages. Yes, uh, one in, size. In one blends. size, you know. Yeah. So, uh, somehow, I don't know if I, they, t- they tell me at La Aurora they ha- that I had vision ahead to the future, but, you know. Not everyone be- can see that either. I mean, yeah. a lot of investors passed on Uber when it came out because yeah. it was just so, yeah. it was so unique. But now, you know, everyone, you know, has is trying to compete with that level. <laughs> Uh, with that kind of service so yeah so so yes uh, you know so it worked out and now people are doing it also you know and i'm glad that they actually you know doing that because it's the experience of having a, a specific you know uh flavor spectrum in in just one cigar what i thought was unique about the event yesterday and i only walked in right quick to meet luis and 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 schedule the interview was the Havana Cigar Club customer had a chance to walk in and choose which blend of whiskey that they wanted. Yeah. And Luis says, you choose the blend of whiskey that you want, I'll pick the blend of cigar that I think goes with that whiskey. Yeah. So, so they I'm had curious. a really good... I have an idea of what I would pair this with. What kind of whiskey would you pair this cigar with? You know what? I don't drink whiskey. Mm. But I th- it, the, it seemed to uh, pair very well with the people that I talked yesterday with a... Lenfidic uh, 21 and 18. Mm-hmm. So people actually enjoy that. I'm not a, uh, a, a whiskey drinker. I, I enjoy more rum. It's my sure. mm. drink of choice. But, uh, you know, a very dark aged, uh, sweet, mm-hmm. but not too sweet, uh, smooth uh, rum will also pair very nice with us. I think this would pair very nicely. And the flavor that I get reminds me of a rye whiskey, right? Like it's not overly. Malty, I get like a rye whiskey kind of flavor. I think this would pair very well with a rye, a nice rye whiskey. Okay, yeah. it's not something that's got too much, too much bite to it. Like there's, there's I'll, I'll big differences in rye I'll whiskey. I'll take your word yeah. for it. Yeah, <laughs> I think it would pair good with a beet salad. 
a steak. <laughs> you know, Joe's uh, making reference hey, to an epic know, dinner. <laughs> yesterday I had a, a honey IPA that they have. I don't remember the, the, sure. the brand. But I actually, it, it helped the cigar develop. It was very nice mm. with a beer. Yeah. So uh, it, was a, it was a nice compliment to it. So eh, it, it all depends on the palate of the person. Yeah. Sure, it does. Yeah, pairing mm -hmm. is very subjective. I agree. I have a question. What um, flavor profile were you going for when you launched this? Or do you just kind of mess around with the blends and say that's it? Or do you have some sort of a <laughs> profile when you're creating a new blend in your head? I know you said that it no, takes time. but no, Normally I go with a, like a, a set blend. Okay. Or at least what tobacco I want to use uh, already in mind. Okay. Uh, from that point on, you know, we just say, okay, let, let's try this and try that, let's put this. Actually, in the cigar, I wanted to put some tobacco that, you know, it, it actually didn't work out. So we took it out, but nevertheless, you know, it's like uh, you just something that's satisfying, you know, mm -hmm. something that's not too strong. It has to be a lot of balance in the cigar. Mm. You know, it cannot be overly strong or too soft. Too soft is boring, too soft uh, is not interesting, yeah, you just don't care about the cigar. Now, too complex, too strong, it will actually tire you. And so when people put down the cigar, because they cannot breathe, kind of, you know, it's too, too overpowering. It's a lot of balance, but a lot of taste, mostly a lot of taste, and that's uh, something that I do with all my cigars. In this one, I wanted to be a little bit more high body towards mm -hmm. it towards the middle, most of it, and, you know, just a, a very good dynamic of changes, you know, and you, in this size, this length and thickness, and uh, the size overall, you can actually get that, you know, in the different thirds, you know, three thirds, you can actually taste different things, and, uh, <laughs> but it's something, you know, getting into a full body cigar, it's difficult in the way that sometimes I want to do a cigar, keeping up with the idea of one cigar per blend, one, one size per blend, that uh, <coughs> you don't get the, the right tobacco for it. So, for example, right now, this shortage of tobacco in Brazil, for example, there's a uh, tobacco that I use. There's uh, the price hike in Cameroon also, you know. So sometimes you can get it, and sometimes you can kind of get it. When you get it, you actually start then taking the cigar and working with it. We try maybe 27 different blends mm -hmm. with the cigar. But, uh, <coughs> you know, it's uh, just get, getting the right tobacco for it. You know, that's the most important. As long as you got grade A uh, uh, premium tobacco, you know, you can work with it and, you know, and create something different and unique and, and very good you know are there other new cigars that you're bringing to market recently other than this one no well, recently before this one i had two actually that i had at the event yesterday also i had the jaguar arawaco with uh the arawaco the arawak indians where the tribe where the tainos came from mm -hmm. so jaguar uh, was the name that the tainos gave to my part of the island uh, before he became Mayaguez. That was another cigar brand back in the day, Tainos. Ta side? Yeah, Tainos, but not uh, the... La Gloria Cubana? Was it La Gloria Cubana? No, like, I, no? I, I don't remember right now, but... Uh, this is Yaguez Arahuaco. And it's, it's a figurado, it's a perfecto. It's a very interesting blend, very, very, very tasty. It has a, a hint of sweetness to it. Uh, uh, that's one of them. The other one was... a. Uh, Falto el Procer. El Procer is a, a, a statement, you know, a person of importance. And uh, that's a, a Churchill, uh, also very, very interesting blends. So those are the, yesterday I had the three most recent blends that I've made, you know. Uh, so, for example, the, the, I have other cigars. Uh, I was here in 2015, I believe, when we, uh, Put into business uh, the the los procesos, the 20th anniversary cigar, and uh, we 
you know, from the point on, and you know, put a a couple of other new cigars in the market also, yeah. You know. uh, and they've been very well reviewed. Cigar aficionado, some other magazines, they have been very well received. Nice. And those are all next door. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll have to pick some up yeah, and, and yeah, review this. I've, I haven't smoked I've, the recent I've, releases yet. So. Avana mm. Cigar Club has all Falta cigars, mm. the entire spectrum of cigars. Yeah. You know. And that's 27 facings today? 22. 22. 22, uh, 22. Okay. Yeah. 22 facings. One of them, actually, one of the cigars comes by two because actually I, I in the same box I put two different blends. Mm -hmm. And the only, it's the same cigar completely. The exact same cigar, same blend, everything. Except that 30% of the viso leaf, which is the third primary from mm -hmm. the top of the lid down, that I use in the filler. One is uh, the... Uh, to to blend uh, blend number eight blend number nine that number eight that seed of that viso is cuban seed and the number nine the seed for that viso is dominican seed hmm. and you can actually see the two completely different cigars it's a difference of what a seed can actually make on a cigar so it's the same priming grown in the same region yeah but uh, just different seeds different seed on, and on it's completely the, different on that specific cigar in the feather yeah you know. that's really cool yeah so you can actually, it's a, it's a thing that I like to do tastings with so that people can notice the difference and also teach them, you know, what a difference a seed can actually do to a cigar. Well, and I think all of those factors, what I've learned over the years from people like you in the industry that have been doing it pretty much their whole lives, right, is all those little details matter. And then when we say, I like Dominican tobacco or I like tobacco from this farm or I like yeah. this particular type of tobacco or this priming or this wrapper. Like all those things are just one small little detail. <laughs> and you very astutely pointed out that you can have the same priming in the same form. The seed can change and it totally that changes the flavor. The same country, yeah. the same region, right? but that's this seed, different seeds and, you know, the same priming and everything, just a different seed. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's also, it's also, for example, remember that Mostly in each priming of tobacco, you have three different cuts. You have uh, number one, number two, number three. The three will be la lower in character and in flavor than the first one. Right. So also that, that has to, to, you have that, to take that into is consideration. Is that a sunlight thing or is that a nutrient no, from no, the soil it's, thing? It's, it's, uh, it's just uh, not much the sun, but the, no, the way that nutrients get to the leaf. Okay. You know? But that's why they sometimes they cut the flower out of the plant, so that the 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 nutrients from the soil go directly to the leaf and not to the to, to the, the, to the flower, flower. <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, you know, the different cuts and, and all that. So it's a uh, it's a very detailed in in that point where you actually want what what do you really want to do, what, what taste you want to acquire, what character. So you have to decide on all that, you know, and. You know, thank God that La Aurora for 23 years has given me the opportunity to do that, to, to choose that. And, and I have a lot of, uh, how do you say, uh, availability for the for the tobacco that they have and, and they acquire also. I think added bonus too is, is hanging out with Manuel. Ah. Is like it doesn't matter where you, <laughs> you are, what you're know, doing. He's just like a, a joy you know, to be around. Man, <laughs> this is my brother. I actually have a cigar in his honor. It's called Mentor. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been my mentor for 23 years and actually when I arrived at La Aurora to make my first cigars uh, he was working already for La Aurora for two weeks so mm -hmm. we've been 23 years wow so you've been there with pretty much when he when he when started he, when yeah. he had started yeah mm. so you know it's a it's a brotherhood and a friendship that uh, he always says hey, you, you're not a client you're, you're part of La Aurora and they said like a double belly sword because of the same put me to work over there, you know, to translate things or to, to, to try this, you know, what do you think? It's good, you know, I say it's all part of the, it's fun, you know, this, it's a nice cliche, but you know, when you do something that you love and you, mm -hmm. you really enjoy doing, hey, it's not work. It, 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 I agree with that as well. And I also, what I've realized, I have my own, you know, business for this is our 14th year is that you don't recognize uh, success without people like that that help yeah. you and your business, right? And yeah. I think a, a lot of us that have businesses are like, yes, it's hard work and we work it all the time and it's a long journey, but there's usually a select few people that you're like, wow, 
that person's really really helped me and i can tell by the way you described your relationship with manuel that he's one of those yeah yeah he's uh, a, people that have every, every you. time that i make a blend you know i i consult with him mm-hmm. what do you think you know and uh sometimes we disagree sure well most of the time we agree and uh but but he's been always you know a guide you know that's uh valuable how many blends are you regularly the working on like how many blends are you working on now that you're considering might be your next release <laughs> actually i'm working on something for for the Havana crop next mm. door mm. Uh, maybe but after the ipcpr it's gonna be exclusive cigar for them awesome i'm, I'm thinking of Arancel. i'm still not sure but I, I like the way you're thinking yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, we're uh, big fans of but, the, but, uh, the Sarah. <laughs> yeah sure i i i do very much so like that that's yeah, well, mostly because it forces you to slow down when you smoke yeah the Ancero is like they call it the Apollo cigars it's very elegant mm. very elegant and the good thing about thin cigars like that is that you can actually try the three components with the wrapper the binder and filler all together the combination thicker cigars they're not bad huh? but sometimes that the wrapper and the binder get lost in, in like filler. I said in translation yeah. you know mm-hmm. because you're smoking so much filler that uh you know, it always as you know, you can actually acquire, but not as much as thin cigars. Yeah, I feel like classy when I smoke a Lancero too. It's a very classy size, in my opinion. Yeah. It's a, a very elegant. It's very mm. elegant. More questions for Louise? I know uh, you. you have no, to run where, catch where, plane, where, so. he's got to catch a plane. He's going. He's not going home. He's going. No. He's going. Uh, he's he's got like three or four stops that he's going to. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so are you going to uh, go check out new potential spots to? I'm gonna go, go visit clients that I already have. Uh, I mean, check a couple of new spots. Yeah. 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 You know. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, Louise, thank you for uh, appearing on the Stoic Geek Show. It's always wonderful having you. I, I loved all the information that you shared with us. We talked to. Uh, we covered the gamut, right? We talked yeah. about some yeah. the history of the tobacco in Puerto Rico, yeah. all the way to, to different seed types and how they can present differently in cigars. So thank you very much. Louise. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Take a short break and come back. Stay tuned. <laughs>